Hey everyone, it's John Julian. Today I want to talk about acoustics. I think acoustics are really important and for a while I got really into it. I, I just wanted to know about how it works. I still don't really get it, but I know enough to do some things. And I made these acoustic sculptures. At one point I had 14 of them that were all different and they're all based on typical principles of acoustics because about 15 years ago, I bought this book called Master Handbook of Acoustics and I read it over and over again. I don't fully understand it all still, but there are things you can do. There's basically two things you can do if you're in your own space and you have control over what you can put on the walls. Sometimes in public, right, you can't obviously, but at home and in your own studio, you can. The, the two things that you can do are absorption and diffusion or just do, do nothing. So absor absorption would be like curtains, a couch, a lot of people in fur coats, something like that. Now the thickness of that will affect if the low frequencies will get absorbed and too many people make the mistake of throwing up a blanket and a curtain with nothing else and all that's happening and it's a pet peeve of mine, drives me crazy, all that's happening is that the highs are being killed. So the highs are being muffled, yet the bass is still coming through. So you, you get, you might get a, just a messy acoustic space with too much bass echoing around, again getting all boomy, but then the highs, the highs are all killed. So it's better to have uh, a mix of things, of absorption and diffusion. Uh, diffusion would be more like uh, when you have a light bulb that's frosted. It's a softer sound, right? It's a softer look. Whereas the clear light bulb is a bit harsh, right? So diffusion like this is like the frosted light bulb effect. The higher frequencies hit it and then they scatter in different directions instead of just being more like a mirror where it comes right back exactly the, the same way that, uh, that it went in. So now I'll go, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, my, oh, by the way, my public space is one of my favorite kinds of rooms is one that has different materials in it because sheetrock over insulation over studs of a certain depth have a certain signature fre fre frequency absorption. And if you have too much of that, and if you have six walls and ceilings that are, you know, four services of that, it's not great. Uh, unless they were all a bit different in some way, like maybe some were double sheetrock. And <laughs> but no, the best is to have, you could have one wall like that, and then one wall brick, one wall glass, some sculptures, some tables and chairs, some furniture, some exposed piping from the ceiling, you know, ducts, anything like that, anything that's kind of bumpy is, is good. And maybe hardwood floor, maybe a bit of concrete. But not just one thing, so it's good to have a, I know we can't always uh, get that. I, in fact, I rarely go into a place like that has all these nice things. Uh, but generally, when things look nice and there's been some care to make it look nice, uh, half the time that ends up working out nicely that it just will sound good too. And in fact, some famous people like Alicia De La Rocha, classical pianist, used to make a lot of her solo piano recordings in this one art gallery in New York. I haven't been in there personally, but there's nothing better than natural reverb, natural, it just comes back to you right away. It makes you play better, makes you play differently. Too many studios, they just kill the sound because they can control it with their artificial reverb, but then it changes the way you play. You don't end up liking yourself as much or liking your playing as much. And the artificial stuff never sounds as good. So now, of course, I only have three in this room and it's, so it's not doing much. It's just more for decoration and I kept the three that were the hardest to do because the other ones were kind of easy and I can duplicate them. But every time I m kept moving into different cities, I just couldn't take them all with me. They were too heavy and too much to pack up, too breakable. So this one is a combo where you have hardwood like that and then some space. And in these little spaces where the orbits are, there's cardboard, just the thin, very thin cardboard. I can even feel it and then holes in the wood behind that, I believe it's been so long. And then in here in this cavity is a lot of insulation. So the idea is that the lower frequencies will hit this 
the lower frequencies tend to just go right through and then into here and then they get absorbed and then that cuts back some of the lower frequencies. The highs, uh, well, there's some bumps here, so that's good. So it does have some diffusion and, and these spheres help kind of give some diffusion. So it's, yeah, that's why I say it's a combo. It does both base absorption and diffusion on the surface. Uh, a couch, for example, would be just pure diffusion. I mean, sorry, pure absorption. Yeah, and then uh, a bunch of Lego, like if you had a bunch of Lego models in your hand or stuck on the wall, that would be more like pure diffusion and hardly any absorption at all. Uh, that's like this one. This one's just pure, pure wood, no fiberglass, nothing soft inside or anything. So it's just, I cut up a bunch of random wood using a jigsaw, took forever, and then I glued it together and put some screws in the back for extra strength and kept it all, I kept all these the same size just because then if you have a whole bunch, it, it looks kind of neat. So that's just pure diffusion and it scatters stuff in different directions. Uh, I once called a well-known company that sells these things and I said, this is at the very beginning when I didn't know much and I said, hey, what is the equation that you use, the mathematical equation to know like how, what the distance of the length of these things should be? And, and he said, well, I don't, really want to give you my proprietary formula. And I said, okay, fair enough. But then I called another engineer in New York and he said, yeah, no, don't let them fool you with that stuff. That's, that's just a marketing gimmick because if you do random lengths, distances, it's, it's just going to break up whatever is in that sort of wavelength. Like for example, this is not going to have an effect on really big wide uh, wavelengths, really long wavelengths. So, so for example, low frequencies, they're, they're just going to be kind of unaffected by this. However, if this thing were sticking out from the wall like 10 feet <laughs> and I made a huge one, like just almost like you would see in a cave or something, then that would have an effect on the low frequencies, right? Because then you're getting closer to those wavelengths. So it's been said in the acoustic business that the things, when you make things that stick out, let's say from the wall, that they will have an effect on things that are about seven times as big. So wavelengths that are about seven times the, the length of this distance that sticks out. Oh, so let's see, maybe, what is it, six feet? Three feet. Oh yeah, so any, any wavelength with about three feet or less will be a little bit affected by this. Yeah. And... I'm not going to get into that too much right now. Okay, so then this one is kind of like a, almost like a caricature of a Helmholtz absorber. So it's not a true Helmholtz absorber, but uh, similar in that you have a panel on top with holes in it and then absorption in the back. So the idea is that some, the sound, the, you know, the, the sound, the music, let's say, comes here. And when it's forced to pass through a hole, it gets attenuated, so it, it just shrinks. It's the same, but it just gets a smaller volume. So especially uh, Helmholtz absorbers tend to have these small round holes. And so depending on how many holes you have, and there's a, a, you can look up graphs, it'll tell you exactly what, and depending on how many holes, how the spacing of the holes and the distance from the front board to the absorption area, and maybe how much absor absorption depth there is, uh, then that will determine what frequency you, you can absorb and how much. But I just, this took a lot of work because of the triangle, cutting it, that out with uh, using a jigsaw. And this is just solid pine from Home Depot. Then hole saws and then some absor absorption back there. And it used to be a white, bright white towel, but I have to kind of, it just went dark and so I need to fix that and replace it. But yeah, so I hope that helps. Uh, the biggest mistake, like I say, you know, people just kill the high end and do nothing about the low end. It would almost be better to kill the low end by putting large base traps, meaning just like, you know, those big packs of fiberglass that are this big. Like if you could put them in all the corners and not only just this corner vertically, but like the horizontal corners. And if you could put all those fiberglass bundles up there and then cover it with cardboard or fabric or something so, so it looks nice, right? Because you don't want to be looking at a pack of fiberglass. 
But then uh, that would really control the standing waves. The standing waves are when you, let's say, you're playing an instrument or singing and you get to one note or certain notes and they sound twice as loud as the other ones because the room is highlighting that. The room is has certain dimensions that is just creating a standing wave on that frequency. And usually every room has a few of those. Sometimes uh, a room often has one or two that are really bad, right? The best rooms have subtle ones, but many of them. So many, 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 and then you don't even notice it because it's just, uh, they're more subtle. And what uh, was I gonna say about that? Oh yeah, so if you could treat the corners and then just put diffusion, just put the bumpy stuff on the wall. You know, another bumpy thing would even pictures help a little bit, like picture frames. Um, you could be creative. You could just put two by fours from ceiling to floor at different lengths or, or sticking out different amounts, if you know what I mean. And bricks, sometimes brick walls, if you can stagger the bricks a little bit so that they're not, not all smooth, then that would really help too. Do you know that in the old, old churches from a thousand years ago, they purposely, they knew about this stuff and they used to, instead of having just the stones or the bricks just close together like that, they would occasionally leave one a little bit askew so that there was a space in there, a hole, and then they would have some ash in there or sand back further. And so they were creating almost like a, an absorptant area so that some sound could escape into so that it wasn't such a crazy echo in there. That's what some of the theories are. Anyway, thanks for listening and hope you like this and talk to you later.